We're in the studio this morning. It's Chris and Terry with conductor Ernest Richardson and producing artistic director Wayne Bryan. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. Thanks for having us. This is fantastic because not only do we have two very talented individuals here, but Terry is about to come out of her seat. Yes. She's glued for South Pacific. I love South Pacific. I grew up listening to the soundtrack. My parents had the Mary Martin soundtrack when she was in there. And it just every song from Gonna Wash That Man Right Out of My Hair, some Enchanted Evening, Happy Talk. I mean, they're all songs that every they cross every generation, and they're just fun to sing. And I cannot wait for this performance. It's Ernest, awesome. when do you find the time? That's all I got to ask, because you're a very busy man. I'm busy, but I make the time for okay. really great stuff. All right. And uh, Wayne, is this your first time in town? It is. is I it came really? in August for auditions okay. and to see the wonderful Vanessa Williams concert that they did at the symphony yeah. to see what the hall was like. But this is the first time I've gotten to come and work and... This is a fantastic organization to get to partner with, as I know you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Ernest and, and we go way back. Uh, what do you think of the Holland? Oh, well, we go, we get to move in there for the first time today. So I'm very excited. We've been rehearsing it in different spaces. Very excited to get into the actual hall today. The concert I saw there really impressed me with the acoustics and the sight lines. And I think even a lights, even though this is a concert version, we're doing it very much in a theatrical way. So there's staging, there's costumes, and uh, we'll get to start adding the lights. It, it's going to be a very exciting few days. Well, Ernest says it's his worst place to play. He hates it in there. Absolutely detested. I never say that. No, well, not at all. We you, never you see you volumes until on it. Christmas, so it's nice to see you again. It's great to yeah. be in the studio with you guys. Yeah. yeah. All right, so South Pacific, tell us a little bit about why you guys are picking this one, what, why it came to the symphony. I think it really start, started back several years ago when we got to go to Wichita and hear Wayne's Theater and his productions for the first time. We had kind of heard about it. But, you know, you just don't imagine that unbelievable music theater is necessarily going to come from Wichita. I don't know why. <laughs> but we go to that uh, theater, and we, we heard a beautiful production, saw a beautiful production of uh, Mary Poppins. We got to meet Wayne. And from that point forward, we were really excited about the possibility of putting something together that would bring this guy to our community. He is a remarkable wealth of knowledge which is really great but he also has such a great feel for the, these the musical in general and this musical in particular so this seemed like a perfect opportunity to really combine forces <laughs> Wayne's just smiling That's I know I could talk That's to a him forever smile. He has everything. oh Wayne why did you choose South Pacific well, there are certain musicals that really benefit from having the expanded orchestration. Not every show really welcomes this. But South Pacific, when we learned it in the movie, and those of us who grew up with the movie version of it, you're used to a big orchestra on that movie soundtrack. So to hear all those lush strings, all those colors and the woodwinds and the percussion. And even when we pack our orchestra pit at Music Theater Wichita, when we're doing the production, we can only, at the most, get about 32 people in the orchestra pit. Here you're going to see it with 65 players. Wow. And not only do you get to hear the lushness of this, but you get to see what the harp is doing and what the violins are doing and what the piccolos are doing and how that inner plays with the characters of the actors. It's a unique kind of visual and listening environment. And South Pacific's just one of those shows that benefits from it. I also think that, as we were talking earlier, the music seems to appeal to each generation. So it's a nice linking from one generation to the next, re-encountering these songs. But the time period in which it's set was the last time our country was all kind of on the same page. Everybody agreed that the war in Europe had to be stopped. We had to establish freedom for people. And everybody in the United States sacrificed and worked together. The women went into the factories. Uh, Lucky Strike cigarettes got rid of the green on its label so it could be used for chlorophyll and ammunition. And women stopped wearing nylon hose so it could be parachutes. Mm -hmm. And it, it was such a joint effort and it's very hard if we watch the news now to imagine a country where everybody is pulling for the same thing and it's very healing and encouraging to go back and re-encounter these characters and then to have the wealth of all that music on top of it it's pretty unstoppable well said <laughs> yes yeah. uh, this is not just musical this is also uh, guest singers 
Right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they're coming in from. And actors. And actors, <laughs> yeah. yes. And they're coming in from. Uh, Broadway, uh, the East Coast, uh, Midwest. We have uh, all of the leading actors have worked with me in Wichita. And Horak, who is playing Nellie Forbush, and I think she's just so ideal for it. I tried to get Anne to do the role for me in Wichita a couple of years ago, but she was playing Roxy Hart on Broadway at that moment, so the timing didn't work out. But she started in our collegiate company and now has gone on to this lovely career, and it's so fun to have that much history with her and have her come back and do one of these things that has to be put together so quickly, but we still want all the nuances. We want Nellie to be all the things that you expect her to be. And a Jeff Kuhn, who's playing Emile de Beck, one of the best singing actors I know. I just love listening to him, and I love working with him as a director because he's such a fine actor and so intuitive and so present in the room. He lives and works in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, Philadelphia areas, uh, but I've worked with him three times before. So it was fun to pull on the people that you know that you think are just ideal for this. But one of the great audience favorites, and our favorites too, is <laughs> going to be Hazel Ann Raimundo, who's Bloody Mary. She was unknown to me, and we needed to find just the perfect person who could bring all the colors of that character, the the funniness and the beautiful singing, but then the dramatic heft in the last mm -hmm. part of the story. So what we're doing, I, a lot of us who grow up with these albums are perfectly happy listening to the album of a show, and in that hour that you listen to it, you relive the characters and you enjoy the music. If you go see South Pacific in a fully staged production, it's about three hours long. This one is just about two hours long. So we have dialogue and we have dancing and we have all the things that hook one song to the next, but it is a little bit abbreviated and streamlined to give you all the highlights of the dialogue, but all of the music intact. It's a really neat mix. Awesome. It really wait. sets the context. The we're used to doing in, in a in a symphony kind of situation, we do all the big songs. And they're great. There's great mm -hmm. standalone songs. What you miss in a situation like that is how the songs are critical to the development of the story and the characters. Exactly. So it, it just takes a little it takes a particular order, obviously, mm -hmm. but it takes enough text in between the songs that you really get the total story. And that's why this kind of experience is, is so unique to the symphonic world is we take the time and we have developed the capacity to actually produce a show, which is not always the case with um, major orchestras. They know how to do concerts, but they don't necessarily know how to do the theatrical part of this. Our organization over time has really developed that capacity, so it's a nice, smooth integration. When we bring real theater people into our house, we are able to actually present theatrical productions. So one of the, one of the big pluses, too, I want to say mm -hmm. quickly is the, the group Resonance. Those singers that have been brought up in this community to sing with the symphony, but they are actors and they are good mm -hmm. individual characters. And so they're playing all of the other roles, you know, behind the leads. And they're just so versatile. Let me ask you this, Wayne. What do the actors, how do they like doing a show this way? Well, they're nice to me. Yeah. I hope they're having a good time. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think it would be like just an abbreviated version of what you're going to do, but at the same time, you get to put everything still into it, the emotion, and like you said, the storytelling is there. But yeah, it'd be a little bit different, but probably fun. A change-up, a switch-up. It what is, to. And, and it makes you determine what is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. Anne was saying that she's really drawn a lot of strength from reading the stories and really immersing you know, in the newsreels and in that environment so that when we make streamlined, direct choices, mm -hmm. they're coming from a broader context that at least she knows what the background of it is. She's delivering just three lines, but she knows what led up to those. Yeah. And if we do that in an informed way, I think the audience will go for the ride. But, you know, that's, that's the magic of this. We mm -hmm. don't know until we get it in front of an audience mm -hmm. if they are going to get all that we want them to get out of it. Exciting. So, Ernest, like the Christmas celebration, is this going to be kind of linear right out in front of the symphony there on the stage? As yes. opposed to, you know, depth and, and large set pieces like a normal, what people would think of as the musical. Right. We won't have really set pieces at okay. all. We'll have small things that kind sure. of identify spaces. We will use um, as much of the space as we can, but the principal activity takes place in front of the orchestra. The orchestra is there not only as a, um acoustical backdrop so in the acoustical footprint but it is as you're saying it provides a, a kind of visual backdrop that's that's different 
from palm trees and things like that, mm-hmm. but is but is interesting nonetheless and, and gives that kind of visual capacity to the show. How exciting. Yeah. What piece were you looking forward most to working on? Did you have one? You know, it's it's a great question because they're all the showstoppers and I love all of those. But the the to me the pivot moment in the show is when Cable sings You've Got to Be Taught. Got to be taught mm-hmm. to be afraid. This idea that um you know, Emile de Beck says this this prejudice that they're dealing with in the show isn't born in you. It can't be born in you. And then Cable says that's true. You know, you've got to be taught all these things. And you've got to be taught before it's too late, before you're six or seven or eight, mm-hmm. to hate all the people your relatives hate. I mean, there's so much power mm-hmm. in that. And when you finish that song, it's such a powerful song. And and you really wonder where everything's gonna go, because all of the characters' choices come down to this moment and then they have to decide if they're going to go through with that training or if they're going to reject the training and take a different path and to me that's one of the most exciting moments in the show even though there are all these great love songs and I love love so I love that and great production numbers but there's something about where that song takes place and and all the depth of everybody's lives that get put into those simple lines that to me really is the most powerful moment of the show. So I always look forward to that. I love when everybody falls in love, of course. Of course. <laughs> I love a happy ending. Yeah. So it does end happy. <laughs> but um, that's a real great moment for me. Wayne, are you looking for some applause? Because I don't know if Ernest told you about the <laughs> Omaha crowd. We're a little, well, exuberant. Yeah. Oh, Very. I can't wait. There are a few places, in fact, Carefully Taught is placed in the show in such a way that it is delivered and we don't think they'll applaud after it. It, it goes right into the next mm-hmm. dramatic thing. And that would be a great compliment if they are so caught up in the moment that they don't feel they have to do that. But I don't think any actor is ever unhappy to have some applause come their way. So uh, I, ho- I hope we'll give them good cause for their natural exuberance. <laughs> well, it's a very educated audience. Mm-hmm. It is. Yes. And they're very excited. And, and they this- love their orchestra and they love love these opportunities so it's great and it's a timely message we all need to revisit that message don't mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. this time in the world well just a couple of days too that's it it's this weekend right so it's not a long run we got to get them when we can yes <laughs> yeah so well, well it's south pacific in the winter in omaha i and mean how, what, bad what, could what, that be? how bad could that be <laughs> exactly perfect timing for it so we'll uh, look to stephanie who's off camera tickets are still available okay we can get the mats Okay, there Ticketomaha.com. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, I think if I understand, the best seats are available for the Sunday afternoon performance because okay. it looks like Saturday is pretty uh, well sold. Okay. So if, if, if this does sound like something interesting to you and unique and fun and musically satisfying and dramatically rich, well, don't wait too long because uh, the tickets are going. Right. Yeah. Right. Wayne, well, welcome to Omaha. Yes, Thank you welcome, so much. Wayne. This so was glad lovely. To have Thanks you. so much. Yes, yeah, Ernest, always great to see yes. you. My pleasure. It's great to see you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have fun this weekend. We will. South Pacific, in town. I even had to wear the shirt for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love good. that. Holland Center for the Performing Arts. Get your tickets now. And what did you say? Tropical and topical. Topical. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Tropical Perfect. and tropical. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.